Now, here's your hosts, The League Dad, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. What's up, gamers, and welcome to another episode of the All In Podcast. I am The League Dad, and as always, I'm joined by my awesome co-hosts and friends. We've got Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. We've got the whole gang today, which uh, I'm very happy about, and... Uh, this is exciting because I thought quarterfinals were fantastic. Uh, I know, uh, you know, there were a couple 3-0s. One of them definitely knew that was coming with JDG and Rogue. But uh, even the T1 RNG felt a little closer than 3-0. And then we had some banger series uh, with Gen G versus uh, Damwon and EDG versus DRX. But before we jump into those games, uh, let me just get your overall thoughts on, on how you felt. Obviously, you could see the excitement in my voice. I really... Uh, thought all the games were great. I had a great time. Uh, I'm super excited to see the semis this weekend because of all the hype that's been happening. But uh, what do you guys think overall? Uh, did you guys think it was as hype as I did? Because I, I thought it was just amazing. Yeah, I thought it was super hype games. The quality of the games besides the first best of five were like on average very high. And the excitement level was crazy. Like there's just so many cool moments that happened. Uh yeah, even though this this is definitely very recency bias focused, but it's like I mean, like wow, when it was just the East versus the East, it was just way more exciting, and yeah, you heard yeah. the crowd popping off for both sides, and I was like, oh, that's sick. And then when it was the East versus Rogue, it was like, oh my god. <laughs> so Rogue. those are my immediate reactions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought, I mean, I I was kind of not too hyped about most of the games until we got to the last series. Last series made me it really made me hype for this coming weekend. Um, especially being there in person, really looking forward to that. Mm. But I think, I mean, it it's it got better throughout the week. It started off with the most boring series and ended with a banger. So, yeah, that's true. It's definitely had that nice natural progression. We just, you know, Rogue got all the European crowds hopium out real fast. Just mm -hmm. get it over with. All right, <laughs> yeah. cool. We're done. No, no, no need to stress. We can just watch some good quality games. I mean, that's what I kind of feel like whenever NA gets eliminated and we just watch these crazy Eastern teams. It's like, oh, I'm not stressed anymore. I don't even, like, I'm just here to watch some good League of Legends. Um, I do have a funny story not related to League, though. I do want to share. I think you guys are going to like it. It's pretty... Um, <laughs> okay. So I drove, I'm actually in Oakland right now. I drove down. Uh, it was my friend's birthday on Friday. And I was, there was going to be like a small little party, a little get-together, right? So I was shaving my face and... Um, I had a razor, and then I accidentally went a little too high, and I kind of <laughs> nicked, like, the side of my head, and it was uneven. So I was like, okay, I'm going to try and fix it, right? So I tried to fix it, and then I was even out, but it wasn't quite even, and I kept trying to fix it. And then I don't know what happened. I, like, blacked out. I lost control, and then I just shaved the entire side of my head. <laughs> well, you I... it even. might as well commit at that point. I respect yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> You know, okay, here, I, here, here's the move, Mitchell. Hear me out, right? Echo okay. cosplay. Oh, oh, that's not uh, a bad idea go. for oh, Halloween. Oh, that's this weekend. Okay, I, that's I, actually... was, I was going to say something because I could kind of tell from the side. I was like, did you get a haircut? But when you just turned your head to the side right now, <laughs> it's like, oh. <laughs> hey, man, it it's looks edgy. It's edgy, It does man. look edgy. I, I got the OG Skrillex cut from like... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Like Vi. That's a throwback. Yeah, like Vi too. Yeah, Vi and Echo made it cool, actually. But Skrillex, it was kind of cringe back then. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I wore a beanie like when I went to my friend's birthday party. And then finally, I like took it off. like, ta-da! And everyone was like, what the <laughs> hell did you do? <laughs> cool, man. Well, uh, I mean, exciting and exciting haircut. So that's amazing. Mm -hmm. I am... Uh, if you guys didn't know, uh, but me and Alistair are going to be at the semis in Atlanta. I am super, super excited, uh, especially because my team T1 is still in it and they're looking pretty good. Uh, I, I cannot wait. I, I've actually had my son, uh, he watched the games with me and I've kind of been filling him in with all the history of like who these teams are. So he's definitely a T1 fan now. You know, I told him about Faker and he's like, I want Faker to win. I'm like, that's right. <laughs> it's like, that's right. You want Faker to win. So mm. it's going to be a good time. Uh, hopefully me and Alistair can, can, uh, meet up and take a picture. We'll be there for a few days, but, um, yeah, I mean, let's get, let's get into some of this. Like, so if you guys haven't seen uh, the games already, definitely pause and go watch it because there were some amazing series there. But um, if you've come back and you or you've seen it already, we've got T1 versus JDG uh, on one side and then we've got DRX versus Gen G. Um, 
let's just start with the fact that we have three LCK teams, one LPL team, and yet moving forward, there will be no LCK or LPL casters <laughs> going on. And uh, that's kind of interesting because you're like, man, it's all those teams and yet none of their casters there kind of doesn't feel right. Like the fact that those are their regions and they don't get to, you know, cast. I'm sure definitely they'd be hype because it's like their, their own regions. But what are your thoughts on that? I just feel like it's, it's weird. Like if NA was there and we didn't have like a Zale or a Kobe or freak even right uh, in there, that'd be totally weird to me. So I think that's just kind of weird. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. My initial thoughts are like, it, it makes sense to me if, like, Campfire or a Kobe or, like, you know, like, the mainstays, right? The really tenured or really high-quality ones from NA are there. Yeah, it makes sense, right? It's an NA thing. It costs money to keep them here if you, they're traveling. Sure. Uh, but I do think that, like, at least on the analyst desk or the casters, like, there should be one. Uh, I think historically the LPL casters just never come. Like, either they aren't invited or they're not invited for long. And the LCK ones have been in the finals before, you know. Uh, famously, there was Monte Cristo back when yeah. SKT and everything were competing in season three and four. Then there was like I think Papa Smithy was on there, and Atlas was here too. There's like been LCK. I'm surprised they didn't stay because like you could say, okay, you know, they they planned this ahead of time. But I'm like, sure. So you you but you know that LCK is gonna at least have two people in semis, like yeah. almost certainly, right? Unless they collapse. Right. So what is going on? Um. I think it's really bad for casters, but I actually think it's worse for the analyst desk. Like, I don't follow the analyst desk as much anymore, but, like, that's where it really matters, right? When you actually know what's going on, what's going to be drafted, um, know, like, the history of these teams. And it's so strange that they kind of just disrespect those regions because, yes, I still think NA is one of the best regions on average for broadcast talent, but there's some really good ones from the other regions. And yeah. it's very, even if they weren't as good, they're the specialists for the people on stage so it's kind of just disrespectful to those leagues and it kind of makes it feel like they're just second class citizens even though they're the best leagues true i don't know any needs representation screw the other regions <laughs> yeah. spoken well, like a true like, na <laughs> i i definitely i i can agree with some of it and then to be fair i think there's a lot of factors at play here like first of all it's in na if there's no way this happens true. if worlds is in korea or china there's just no it doesn't happen but yeah. I feel like for sure, at least on the analyst desk, I can definitely get behind like NA casters for semis and finals just because like they are the best casters. Like, this yeah. bias aside, like the NA has the best casters, but the analyst desk does definitely feel weird to me because like sure we have good analysts, but they they don't follow the league as closely as the people who are there and get paid to be there at, day in day out. So it, it definitely feels weird, and I can agree where it definitely feels disrespectful, at least for the analyst desk. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to really... You guys covered it pretty well. I mean, Atlas, I think, is pretty good. I would love yeah. to see him in there. Yeah, I like He's him. actually so hyped to listen to. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I wish, I, wish, I wish he was there. The other... Who's the other LCK caster? I forget. Or LPL. There's the other guy. He's, LPL's uh, Dagda. There's two LCK, Dagda. I think. But I forgot I, who the uh, Chronicler, I think his name was. Yeah. I, I don't know. I actually only like Atlas. This is just personal preference. I actually don't really care for the other two. Otherwise, and then after that, the only EU caster I actually like is Cadrill, too. Dracos is kind of whatever. And then, yeah, it's all NA for me, baby. So, <laughs> I'm like, for my personal preference, I'm actually like, it's not that bad, right? Uh, I do wish Atlas was there, but everybody else, I could care less. Um, but, yeah, I mean, sounds like it's a money thing. That's like, that's the only thing that really pops in my head. It's just a money thing. They didn't want to pay for them to stay. They're international, right? Azale, Freak, Kobe, Jat, they're all they're all at their own house. You know, they don't have to pay for their hotels or anything sure. like that, you know. So or yeah. maybe they're not. because uh, yeah, it's gonna be in San Francisco for finals and stuff and Ride doesn't get you cheap stuff. hotels either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. So yeah, yeah but okay. like earlier on, I don't know, it's weird. Whatever. Who cares? I mean money. Who cares? You know what you know what we should care about though? Who is better? L C K or L P L? Because this is you know, like you know, this has always kind of been the real competition like this is the real like who's better than who like yeah. honestly as much as we want it to be like eu and na are just not in that category of who's actually the best and so we've kind of seen you know at first it was korea dominating all the time then we had this run of lpl doing great now it kind of seems to be back on the lck side and honestly uh i don't yeah i think it's pretty evident that LCK is back and they are dominating. Um, 
But what are your thoughts like overall? Because there are a lot of, it seems like there are a lot of good LPL teams, but they just keep collapsing when we get to Worlds. Like we, we definitely seen that a couple years now in a row. Um, and so I don't know what that is, if it's just the stage jitters or what, but I feel like it should be, there should be a lot more even split. Like, honestly, I was kind of rooting for EDG to beat DRX just so we would have more China versus Korea type deal. And, and, and instead we have three Korean teams, but it's whatever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Like uh, on the whole like rivalry between, uh, the Eastern teams? Yeah, so someone brought up, I don't know which talk show it was, but someone brought up this, ever since Seoul was added to the game in 2020, Korea's just absolutely eclipsed Europe again. Like, Europe was doing really well in 2018 and 2019, and then they just fell off a cliff after the Seoul was added. And I was like, oh, that makes sense, because Korea's meticulous with their setups for these objectives, and once you get four, you just win. Uh, not win, but you win a lot more often, right? And that also is, 2020 is uh, coincidentally the year that LCK did win, right? Last year... In 2021, EDG barely won, but they did win. Um, still, the record was 8-9 to nine in best of five since like 2017 or 2018. So it was only this year that LCA started winning. That being said, it is still 3-1, to one, right? Uh, JDG might still be a favorite, but like you, two years of 3-1 to one is like enough to say like, okay, if DRX is a not good team, but EDG still lost in game five, like the fourth seed loss beat the third seed. Like, I mean, it's not a huge upset. But it's the, still the reigning world champs. Uh, my last thought was that I think LPL, from what I've seen, they're generally very stubborn with like what they pick. And if they like what the, if what they like to pick is the meta, they will win. Like I think they're just the best at what they do. Like you saw Ming just come in and still pick Nautilus when everyone dropped Nautilus, right? Mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that just still happens in LPL all the time, and it's kind of a coin flip. While Korea's like they they figure out what the meta is. They look at Europe usually and they're like, hey, Yi is playing <laughs> yeah. Yumi, Malka, whatever, right? And then they play it, and then they. They master it. So it's kind of an arms race. I still think that like we it, the sample size is small, but right now it's the case average strength this year is higher. That's uh, at least at Worlds, right? Yeah. I think it's kind of hard to tell because I would actually say they're pretty even. They still have been for a while because I think Korea overall has more like high. I don't want to say better talent because that's not that's not what I'm trying to say, but they tend to have better players because if you look at the L the LPL teams that win, they have like two Korean imports each team, mm -hmm. right? So True. I think it's kind of a situation where it depends what you value more. I think Korea overall has better players, but uh, China has a better environment. They they're yeah. able to bring up these players. There's a reason why FPX was able to win worlds with two rookies or three rookies, whatever it was, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, kind of goes I, back and forth. Yeah, I think I find this narrative pretty weird, actually, because I actually it doesn't seem like LCK is back at all. I mean, mm. I don't think they just, left. I don't think they left. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like okay. they're both at the top, and then mm. Dan won one in 2020, three one to Chinese team. 2021, EDG three two Dan won, and then China wins, and then but China's won every MSI, right? And then it's only this Worlds where it's like. We're not even done yet. We don't know who's won. JDG could still win it, and then this narrative just disappears completely. Um, so, I mean, three LCK teams in and one LPL team. It's like, yeah, but like you know, one LPL team did collapse in quarters or in, in groups. That happens, and then EDG barely got reverse swept. So it's like, is DRX better? Yeah, but barely. So I don't know. It just it doesn't seem like there's a real narrative here. It just seems like they're both very neck and neck, and that. Um, it's a like if LCK wins this year, right? LPL could just win next year, and then they're still even. Like they still seem like both really insane regions that are really really good at the game. So yeah, yeah. okay. To add on to it, like RNG has won what MSI three times now. Two, two <laughs> yeah. of the times they were literally all Chinese rosters. So it's like, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. The they the world's winners are always has a Korean import at least one, right? But for some reason, like when it's MSI is it gets this exact same two one roster we're looking at. They just they do well. Um, so. I'm not really sure what that is. Maybe we just don't have enough international competition, so the sample size is just tiny as hell. So yeah. we just have to make up these narratives. But and it's just, it's just like natural variance, right? It's just like some of these things that like people are looking into. It's not real. It's just it just happens. It's there's no yeah. reason behind it. This is just what's happening right now. So yeah, I mean, a lot of it's like MSI. There's only one team from each region, right? So you can just kind of get maybe that the top Chinese team has a or like RNG for example is just good against. SKT, yeah, in that meta. That's how it yeah. went. I I don't really remember it because I mean MSI is kind of just like a oh yeah that happened type thing. <laughs> yeah, 
it feels yeah. like. So it's kind of hard to tell. Yeah. It, it is hard to tell. And it's also just like, I don't know, when you look especially at like, okay, so T131, 3 would RNG, right? But like, it was literally just like such a small difference in game two that really made it a 3-0. Because if yeah. RNG doesn't throw that game two, that could go five games because they were tilted out of their minds in game three, right? Mm -hmm. And then same with uh, DRX EDG, right? 3-2, very, very close. A couple things in early series or later series, super minute. It's like, you know, you, you don't really I, – I don't feel comfortable because I when I understand the, the game my way, saying DRX is just a better team than EDG. It's just they won that day. Right, yeah. you play that game again next week, a week after. Who knows who wins? It could be another three-two in the other way. So it's just really insane, guys. These guys are these teams are so good. <laughs> They're so <laughs> the losers bracket. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, yeah that's bracket, true. 100%. And you know, yeah. we were talking about this last time, where you know, when, when we were making predictions, I was pretty much like, other than the the JDG Rogue, I was like, I think every game is going to be three-two. It just felt like that. And like you said, even the T1 RNG, even though it was a three-zero, it definitely felt like it could have been a three-two. Um, yeah. And what I've just noticed, like with these teams, and I don't watch a lot of LPL and LCK until like it's international tournaments. But what I see, especially when it's crunch time, like they really know how to uh, slow down the game if they need to. Like I felt like whenever a team got behind, it would most often than not, the losing team felt like they could slow down the pace enough to where they could kind of uh, get back into it, pick their fights. And, and they understood where they would need to uh, get a fight like when their timing was um, when their spike was when their chance was and I just felt like all the games that I was watching like if it was a 2000 gold lead that it would just stay and, and yeah. it wouldn't like get any bigger for some reason and then you know the losing team just always felt like they were still in it um, no matter what and that's just the, the thing that I noticed is that with these teams it just feels like you can't count any of them out at any point of the game. Like even when it seems like all is, all is lost. Like even when there's a huge gold lead, I still yeah. never really felt like, Oh, this is over. Like I was like, well, I don't know. It felt like there were still some chances and so opportunities for the team that was behind. But um, yeah, we talked about this last time. Like, and we've talked about this a couple of times, honestly, when you get to this high level, right? The thing that matters the most is your play and your coordination gold yeah. experience, team comps and stuff everything falls below when you get to this high level and it's just how you play like yeah that stuff matters gold and experience obviously very important right but seriously the most important thing is how well you play the fight how well your setup is how coordinated you are what your communication is in the moment right sums are even more important sometimes in gold or xp at that point like it's pretty crazy when you get to this high level level yeah so. Yeah. Okay, well, let's do this. Let's go down uh, the teams that are in the semifinals. And then as we go down the teams, you can talk about the performance in quarterfinals because, you know, obviously mm -hmm. there's a lot to unpack there, too. So it's kind of like two birds in one stone. So, like, All right, let's, if let's we talk go... about my favorite series, JDG <laughs> versus Rogue. Yeah, yeah I mean, we'll start there because it's it's T1 versus JDG. Let's start with JDG because that's kind of like <laughs> the team that... That was the series JDG versus Rogue where it was kind of like, eh, pretty much expected. Go next. Like, eh, we, you know, yeah. it's kind of like nobody was expecting anything else. So let's start with JDG. They are playing T1, but uh, I honestly, they, I, okay, so they won, but they, they did look good. I still think they're looking like a strong team. They're probably like have a good chance to win. I know Mitchell, that's your team, but what are your thoughts on uh, JDG, uh, you know, in the performance? Yeah, I mean, JDG, that game was disgust. That, that series was disgusting. Like it, it was, it felt like Rogue was lifeless the whole time. And like, mm -hmm. it felt like, okay, so here's, they got destroyed. Uh, the good news is that JDG had to show no strategies, right? They just they just played yeah. their default play. They didn't even get behind. Much. Like, dude, I, JDG from behind is terrifying. JDG from ahead, it looked in, in, un, impossible to win. The bad news is they got really bad practice in this meta, like high-level practice on stage. Um, like, this is like, they just didn't get pushed at all. So if they have any major flaws, uh, didn't help. This is the one team, though, that is it is good to, like, it's fine if they didn't get pushed because they're so used to being pushed, right? They're so used to winning from behind. And they already did really well against Damo, who looks like maybe the third best, fourth best team in the whole tournament, even though they got out on quarters. So I'm fine with them. I still think that they, they came out looking not much better than before because they just didn't have to show anything. Um, yeah. 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 Poor Rogue, dude. A poor EU. <laughs> <laughs> they need... The NA soul queue practice was terrible for them is what it looks like. They, they, they NA weak, dude. <laughs> um yeah i don't know G G like kevin said they, they didn't have to show anything and i i would 
disagree. I think they did get pushed in some regards because there were there were some chances for Rogue to come back in that series. JDG was just better. Um, are we going to do predictions now, or are we going to go? Yeah, let's, oh, yeah. Let's just. Or uh, I don't know. I, I kind of want to give my spiel about yeah, maybe fine. a JDG, and then we can talk about T1 RNG, sure, yeah. and then we can yeah, and then at the, the end. Okay, like yeah, your way sounds better, Mitchell. Okay. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's a good point yeah yeah yeah, yeah we planned this <laughs> yeah we planned yeah, yeah, it we did we did <laughs> yeah i mean I, i'm actually i'm gonna say jdg didn't even play that well i'm gonna say they kind of looked like they just didn't even show up there i mean they, they did show up but they were like half asleep like i swear to god what's his name Yagao was like half trolling like that series like he was just fucking throwing his body in there and just saying i don't care we're we're just so much better it doesn't matter they were trying and... just any percent speed run it like yeah they were he was literally isolated with covid so that's probably why he wasn't trying yeah Yagao did not oh yeah he did have covid too like so like these guys i really felt like jdg was so much better that they were playing at 50 percent and that and rogue's chances was actually like zero and um that's pretty sad <laughs> if i'm being honest it's really sad for rogue yeah. uh because and also if you look at the drafts right i do feel like rogue oftentimes got exactly what they wanted they got lucian nami and they got a zir and they got a tank top and they got maokai sometimes too right and it's like rogue was given their best stuff jdg had covid and didn't even try and it was not close so yeah this series doesn't tell me much <laughs> this series yeah. is not you know I think that's what's hard is that because it was such a stomp, like you can't really dissect any information. I think the the one caveat that is a good like reality is that they didn't get good practice uh, on stage because they didn't really get tested. I mean, other than maybe a couple of times, not like these other teams, like the other series is obviously there was some real testing and yeah. also testing mentally. Because like when it gets to a point where, you know, it's on the line, it's it's game five or like you have to make the right play <laughs> like these other teams are ready. And just th there's been none of that uh, with JDG uh, at this point. So I do agree that that might hurt them uh, moving forward. But uh, talk about T1 now. Right. So they they again had RNG. It was a I was excited for that matchup a lot closer than 3-0. But what are your thoughts on on them? Yeah, uh, T1 looked a lot better this time around than, I think, even than their group stage showing. I don't think EDG really, like, in their game one, pressed them very hard. So we never really got a very good read on them, right? They did lose to Fnatic on the, in the first matchup, but then pretty much rolled over everyone once they figured out what to pick. I think the good news for T1 out of, coming out of this was that Zeus looked really, Zeus, whatever his name is, looked really good yeah. uh, in one of the games, right? And he looked okay in some of the games like you know he went oh and six or something but still came eight. out with like on oh, jace uh, baby <laughs> but <laughs> but he did come out of the fight with like second highest or highest damage it was like 6k yeah. plus yeah. i'm like oh, okay okay yeah. so this is what jace is supposed to do right because na jace was like if i'm not 3-0 we're losing and yeah. his jace was like oh there's an out um so that's good news uh guma played really well i mm -hmm. i was impressed uh i think if guma doesn't play as well as he did in game two yeah, and this could be a very different series, yeah. right? And yeah. honestly, that kudos to him because we've been shitting on him for a long time for good reason. He's yep. been kind of bad for a very long time. Um, so this is the right time for him to turn on if he can keep it going. Good shit. I mean, this is this is what they need, right? So this is those are the keys that unlocked T one's performance. That being said, it, it was a three zero, but it was a close three zero. I think game two was really close. Uh, game one, <laughs> I think I think. It, rng's drafts are still in the wrong meta right like they just picked some real garbage um the thing i'll leave off on is apparently on the top of the subreddit right now is rng's uh ming took till 2106 to do any damage on his nautilus oh <laughs> yeah yeah the <laughs> longest <laughs> time in competitive history at least at worlds to do uh, any damage and so i was just funny. like i hate i hate this nautilus right now <laughs> like they just couldn't make it work at all so yeah, T1's looking good. I think we can do the predictions after we do the recaps. Yeah. But yeah, that's so I funny. think they look a lot better than, or a step better because of Guma. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to tell for me how well Faker really played because Xiaohu did not want to win that series. Oh, gosh. He did yeah. not want to win. He mm. was doing everything in his power to lose those games. So it's really hard to tell because those games looked very winnable for RNG. Yeah, Yahoo just oh, yeah. sent it. He so like honestly, I don't know how to feel. I think Gumi is just, like playing really well. Um, I think that really helped, especially 
he, he was comfortable with pick Zaya, which apparently is one of his like go tos. Yep. So yep. that's good, but I, I don't have many comments that weren't already said, just because Jahu just didn't want to play. <laughs> yeah, I felt like Jahu was a big problem, and I mean, I kind of feel bad for Gala, but also like. To be honest, he did in the Kaisa game at least. That was his game to carry. And yeah, he was getting trolled by his mid laner, but I mean, he had so many opportunities to, I think, press his buttons and pop off. Uh, there was one key fight. It was around the Elder Dragon, right? They have, like, RNG's got Soul, right? RNG is on the Dragon first, right? They're ahead in gold and everything. And they have, um, they have, they have a, a Zaya and, and, and Renata that are walking into RNG, right? So I was like, this is. This is really good for RNG, and you just see Faker, like, 2v1 their bot lane, and Gala doesn't press his buttons. He's got Flash, and he's got ulti when he dies to Faker. Uh, after, and a GA. He loses GA, and doesn't Flash, and doesn't ulti. So I do feel like Gala, I mean, he played the series, like, you can see some of his movement. Like, Gala is so clearly absolutely insane, but he chokes two moments, right? And you're just like, oh, well, I guess RNG's done, right? They, they, they live and die by their AD carry. Um, so I, I did feel bad for that because, um, and also in game one too, you, you saw Gala trying to play a Felios and you realize that he actually just can't touch anybody because he just gets absolutely blown up by like Victor or Camille or Graves or yeah. Ash or ha Heimerdinger. It's just such a bad comp to play a Felios Nautilus. Um, so I, I felt bad for, for Gala in that situation. Uh, Wei, who was looking a little sus in uh, group states, actually performed really well. I thought Wei was looking really good. Uh, but it wasn't enough, right? T1, um, man, they have this energy where, like, this was said on the on the on the co stream where it's like they play these absolute garbage comps, five damage dealers, no CC, no no nothing, and they just outplay you. Like their game plan isn't we don't care about our comp, we don't care about any of the stuff. We're just good at our champions. We're here to outplay you. So I mean that's really exciting to see. But then you go to like another uh, game and then you you look at T1's draft and you're like wait, they actually just totally draft gap them. They actually do know how to draft well. Sometimes they just don't choose to. So mm. I don't know what's up with Team 1 in that regard. I think that they're just an insane team. And their worry for me is that, yeah, they're going to play these styles where like they are so insane, but they're, the comp difference, because the enemy team is not a pushover, is going to be the difference maker, right? Like if they play against JDG, and JDG is just as good as skill level, but T1's got a garbage comp, I'm just like, Okay, well, it's looking pretty unfavorable for you guys, no matter how insane you are. The other team is also quite insane. So, um, yeah, we can get into the matchup now, but, like, holy cow, this is this is going to be a tough matchup. This is going to be real intense, like, just solid players all across the board for both teams. Yeah, right I, I'm really looking forward to the uh, the top lane matchup uh, between 369 yeah. and Zayus. I think that's going to be... Uh, really, really cool. And I, I keep forgetting that T1 is still such a super young team. I mean, except for Faker. And Faker's 26, right? Like, that's not even that that yeah, old. Probably. And, like, yeah. uh, I, I, you know, it's crazy to me that they're that they're this good. I, you know, one thing I wanted to point out, too, in, in this series was that T1's bot lane had three different looks in the bot lane. They had, you know, Ashheimer, they had Zaya Renata, and then they they brought out the Varus Tom Kench, which... Dude, they were you know, styling on them so oh my, hard with right? the SDK. It wasn't even, right? like, fair. Dude, like, the Rome mid that they yes. did super early on, and then Caria just absolutely smurfs all over them with Tom Kench. Oh it my it felt unfair. Yeah. And then Guma is just sidestepping all their skill shots. I mean, I'm going to be honest, right? I felt like RNG still had was, like, it was COVID. Like, I really felt like RNG mm. was just a little off more than they could have been. And maybe that's COVID. And, like, man, yeah. they're just whiffing stuff, you know? They're just whiffing stuff on, like, these super smooth sidesteps. Ah, oh, yeah. man. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. And, unfortunately, you know, it could be a COVID thing because there, there were just moments, though. I mean, not to take away from some of T1's play, especially Guma and Karia. Like, Karia also played really good, but... Guma definitely in game two, I think, was a, the big reason why they were still in it. Because even though the rest of the map was not really winning, I mean, he had like a huge CS lead. I think at the end of the game, it was a 42 minute game. He had like 504 CS, like no yeah. deaths. Like that guy, like literally was the the win condition, like I, towards the late game. Dude, like, what is RNG doing though? How is yeah. like 
how are they letting Gala always be in these crappy ass matchups? Like it was so miserable. Mm -hmm. I felt so bad for him. Like he just never gets a good matchup in bot lane, and then his top side is just trolling. Like <laughs> how is supposed to? How's Gala supposed to carry you guys? He's playing so well. I don't know. It feels bad. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let's let's go to the matchup then. Uh, you know, T1 versus JDG. Let's do predictions. I'm going to go last just because <laughs> I don't want <laughs> okay. to hear All what right. you guys have to Leave say first. Enough, You're very flexible on when you want to go first. Thanks. Last. I get Appreciate it. it. I get it. Uh, so for the matchup, I think JDG Gaming still has the magic. I think they have that feel, right? You go into a tournament, you just see a team, and you're like, wow, this team is just playing like they playing a different. They're just playing different from everyone else. Like they have this ability to not lose. Um, after seeing how tenacious Damwon was actually against Gen G, who's another tournament favorite, I'm like, oh, okay, they're not pushovers either. This was like, those were real dubs. They went 2-1 against them, right? Yeah. Uh, all that to say, I think it'll be 3-2. I think that the top lane matchup will be amazing in terms of like, we'll see a lot of, honestly, we'll see a lot of O5s from both ends because like <laughs> these yeah. these two both channel that the shy spirit. Like when I was watching Zeus in uh, the Jace game, I was like, oh, he does not give a crap if he goes 08 or whatever, right? <laughs> yeah. He, he knows what he's got to do. He still has the hands, and he will do it. And he's going to be a pain in the ass if you forget about him, right? So, and 369 was the same. Like, when he was carrying his team from, like, an AK gold deficit or whatever on his Aatrox, I was like, he does not give a crap. No. He doesn't know what a gold deficit is, right? Like, no. he probably is bad at math or something. <laughs> um, so, I, I think this will be an amazing matchup. I can't, I still can't wipe the memory of T1 at MSI from my mind. Like, when it really is like getting harder and harder, I think that the team's young factor is going to be a problem. Like, this team is like 18, 18, 19, 19, and then Faker. Like, something yeah. crazy like that. Or maybe there's one of them's 20. And I looked at that, like, the top three or four youngest players in the tournament are on T1. And I was like, yeah. okay. And like, the court finals matchup, they were playing against RNG, and I agree. Maybe they were COVID, maybe they were just tilted out of their minds. Who knows? But that was not like, that was not MSI RNG. That was not peak RNG by any means. I think JDG is on another caliber. It still will be close because JDG will lose some of these early games. T1's amazing at that. But I think JDG has the edge. I think where we'll see really cool stuff from T1 is we'll probably see some really cool like game plans between owner and um Kanabi. Kana uh, yeah, game plans between owner and Kanabi. Like you see these people like Playing the cross map, I wish Cannon was here. But you see these guys just like completely dominate other junglers. I actually think this tournament has been so sick for junglers and people who like care about jungle gameplay. Yo, I'm so glad we don't have Trundle, Wukong, Poppy every fucking game. <laughs> oh, thank <Yeah>. God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna keep it simple. Three one JDG. Oh wow! Let's go. Let's go. JDG. Holy, are you guys? Yeah, damn. I haven't you know, spoken I said, yet, but yeah, you haven't spoken <laughs> yet. Yeah. It's, it's really kind of weird. When there's one Chinese team left, man. That's all. I'm saying. It is. Mm -hmm. It's true. I, I actually, I'm, I'm backtracking, guys. I actually think T1's oh. gonna take it three two. I know go. I, I called JDG beating the tournament, but now that I've watched the games, I, I, I don't know. Okay, COVID is a big deal. I actually think Yigao's playing like garbage. No joke. And I do think mm -hmm. that like. I, I think that's a big enough difference for me. Like, I, I didn't realize, like, that that was going to be much of a difference maker in my thoughts. But after watching the weekend and stuff, I mean, if Yigao recovers and this, this like, whole prediction is just, you know, gone. Because I do think th uh, JDG at full power is definitely the favorites to win the whole thing. But I felt like Yigao played like garbage. And I felt like that Yigao is probably just not feeling well. He's probably feeling like crap at this moment as we're doing this podcast. And... I can't help but think that like this series is so close and every edge matters. I also think T1, I am done doubting their drafts. I don't care how garbage it looks. I feel like if they can just play their champions, I'm not going to look into draft too much. And T1 is super freaking clutch. Caria is, I think, the best support in the tournament right now. And I think it's it's close, but it's not like as close as some other support players might want it to be. And he's insane. I also think Guma's insane. I, it's hard, man. This is a hard series. It could really go either way. I mean, I predicted JDG to win the whole thing. So if they do still win, I have that. But then I'm <laughs> here, so I don't know. But I'm going T1-3-2. I, I just have this feeling that, like, T1's got it. They were pushed a little bit more, and they got it. So, yeah, that's what I'm going with. Yeah. Let's go. That you know, yeah. you guys already know who I'm I'm going for. You know, yeah, I'm going yeah. with no, my team. No Faker, T1. But look, hey, I actually do have like 
basis for it because usually well, yeah. I'm just I mean, like, they it's, good. yeah, they look pretty good. Like typically <laughs> I'm just like, go. my son told me to. Yeah. My son told me to. I, uh, you know, I, I typically go with my emotions and my heart, but I actually do think, uh, they're looking good. But also you, you mentioned the, you know, the MSI performance that they had, but look, that's experience, right? That's experience. That's, you know, when you lose and you go through that, like, you know how much you don't want to go through that. And uh, if you're able to, you know, come back and beat RNG, you know, who was your nemesis, quote unquote, from MSI, even if they had COVID, that's a confidence booster, I think, uh, for these yeah. young kids. And I do think that that should help them moving forward. I think that that would boost their confidence. I think they know how to win. If if Guma and Karia play like that, I don't think, Anybody can beat them, honestly. And I think this performance where they showed up when they needed to in the quarterfinals, I think that's going to propel them to win. Uh, I do think <laughs> I do think it's going to be 3-2 because th- JDG is so freaking good. Um, but I, I actually think T1 will take this. So that's my prediction. 3-2-T1. Was there yeah, any um, doubt? So we got two, two and two here. T1 yeah. and, and the other for JD, JD. And let's be let's be real, guys, right? Nobody is wrong here. Like you, no one is wrong for predicting either one of these teams because they're yeah. both too cracked. They're both so so good. So I don't think there's a wrong answer here to predict in any way. <sighs> there is a wrong answer. It's JDG because T1. I mean, if, if, <laughs> if those ones were like you want to say like the real finals is in semis, but then you look at the other half of the no. bracket and then you yeah, say, no, that's the real finals type. You're right. Thing. So it's like yeah. it feels like we actually have the four best teams. We don't just have like a, a right. finals level team like yeah. possible champion who dropped out in quarters because of shitty seating yeah, yeah. that's because we don't have eu and na in in the brackets i know right <laughs> sadly so true, though it's God. so goddamn true uh feels bad <laughs> yeah. you know honestly i did really hope that edg would win because when you guys mentioned the storyline that they would be the first if they had won to yeah. win back to back with the same lineup like i was yeah, like how roster. sick would that be and honestly i thought you know Heart of a champion, man. And when they were up 2-0 against DRX, I was like, this is it, man. This is going to be awesome. But uh, it didn't happen. But let's go over to that side. So uh, we have DRX, who did reverse sweep EDG versus Gen G, who narrowly beat Damwon in, like, two amazing series. So both of these teams really had to earn their spot into the semi. So let's start with with DRX. Uh, Go ahead and talk about them. Again, like, they were the last series this past weekend against EDG and they, boy, they had to win three games in a row against a tough team. And man, they, they did it, man. So what are your thoughts on, on DRX? I feel like this whole time, like we've just been dying this team and they made the second ever reverse sleep in world's history. The first one being, I didn't know that success in uh, 2020 or 2019 with top esports versus fanatic in the quarters. Also oh, yeah. finals. That's crazy. Um, so that's very good for my pickums because I, I did say there would be one reverse sweep, uh, which was a long shot. Uh, long. This set has one of the like craziest game twos I've ever seen. Um, like we already had the Gigabyte Marines top esports one, so this is kind of like I guess payback for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. DRX completely benefited off of that. I mean, obviously, <sighs> yeah. we don't know if DRX would have got out first anyways, but n- then they got. Very unlucky. Honestly, I thought Def played it almost mechanically as well as possible in this backdoor. A lot of backdoors you re- watch back, and you're like, oh, you know, like he he hit a minion or whatever. He like he shouldn't have eat. He, he shouldn't have eat. Yes, that that's about it. But he, I can understand it because the Jax was coming. So him eating is like whatever. It's not the worst. It's not the most egregious thing I've ever seen. The egregious uh, thing was the King and TP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the King and TP was right egregious. I believe, <laughs> dude, this guy. This guy alone is the reason I cannot vote for them to win. It's hard. Uh, it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. This, guy <laughs> not, this guy's not it. Um, I think EDG had some good looks in some of the games, even when they were losing, like the last three in a row. Like there were so times I saw some like skill from them. And then I think Scout just lost his mind. I thought Scout like went from MVP level to like he was <laughs> egoing in game five of the finals. And I was like, what are you, or like they're like Elim match? And I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, why do you keep taking these women? And like to be honest, like they were very close, but he was also just he just wasn't hitting them. Like he wasn't hitting the right numbers or he wasn't counting his energy. So Zeka played well. They once again let him get his Silas multiple times. And I was just like, what are you what am I watching here? Um I feel like the other Korean teams won't let them. And so I think DRX looked good on the things they were good on. 
but does this mean that I think that they're going to be Genji? Uh, we'll we'll see. <laughs> You'll hear my predictions soon. Yeah. I don't have anything else to add, honestly. I pretty much said everything that I would say. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the series was crazy, guys. The series was actually like one of those series you watch and you scream your head off because you're like, what the hell? Like the um the clip of like Def getting blue balled by the inhib. I showed it to all my friends, and like some of them don't even really follow League that much, but they all understood what just happened. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they all understand. Oh my god, <laughs> that was crazy. Um, what a moment. I mean, just like one of the things that does feel for me that is in huge favor for DRX is you lose that game and then you still reverse sweep. So, in mm -hmm. almost in a way, four games it was DRX favored. They kind of won four games, kind of. I mean, obviously, they literally didn't, but kind of mental fortitude do you have to have to make that happen that is insane right and a lot of these players are like the down in the dumps players these are the leftovers these are the players that like get put on the like the c tier teams in lck and the c tier teams in lpl who get overshadowed by a lot of the other stars and they made it happen against the world champions the reigning world champions um no one predicted drx i'm pretty sure to win this anyways too so it's like they full underdogged it, like 100%. So, I mean, props to them. Like, holy cow. Um, Zeka, I think, played played pretty well. I, I, he's, I mean, yeah, he got his champions, but, like, it's, you're in a meta, right, where there's a lot of champions that are strong and a lot of champions you have to ban. And you're not going to get – if Zeka is always, always going to be able to get either Azir or Kali or Silas. So, right now, it's just good enough for him, right? If you don't yeah. do that – then you risk giving over Yumi, you risk giving over Aatrox, right? You risk giving over Caitlyn to Deft. You risk Heimerdinger started getting first rotation bans mm -hmm. against them, right? So it's like, I do think Zeka is just going to get one of his champions in that from like tournament forward, it's like probably, you know, you're not going to three ban him in the first phase. So um, I think DRX is, is pretty legit. Kingen. Yeah, he's he's definitely the by far the weakest player. Like he was on Camille, he was fed, and yeah, they still won that game four or whatever it was. Um, but he was hard trolling his lead. Oh my god, like whatever. Like Kingen, you know, maybe it was just nerves, but he was hard trolling some of his leads. Um, but this team is tenacious. That's what I'll yeah. say. They don't play That's perfect. That's a good, That's yeah, a good but word. They're very tenacious. They just they just don't give up, and they yep. do find little angles here to make it. And that's what you got to do as an underdog, you know? So um, I'm honestly proud of them. I'm honestly proud of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but are but. they making it past this? Because <laughs> I mean, we'll get there. But I mean, I, <laughs> honestly, like, I know you. We, we've been saying we've been doubting them over and over again. You know, I'm in that same boat because I'm yeah. just like, how do they keep on winning? Like, I don't think they're bad by any means, but I just don't think they're as good as some of these other teams. And yet you said it. They're tenacious. Like. You know, the, every game in this series, like the the shortest game was the first one at 35 minutes. All of the other games went like two games went over 40 minutes. Uh, they were at 42 minutes, game two and three, and then a 38 and 37 minute for game four and five. Like these were some long games and it did feel like for a lot of them, man, you just felt like that next team fight was just going to be the deciding factor. And I can't tell you, like I'm sweating. Like I was sweating. My hands were sweating as if I was the one that had to hold these, you know, keys because I can't imagine, like, I, I don't know who it was, but I do remember seeing some face cam reactions. Um, uh, I don't even know if it was this series, but for some of the close games where you would just see the players and they were literally shaking, like, you know, like the Jensen moments where you're just like, oh my gosh, these people are like under so much stress. I can't even like begin to imagine every, what it's like pr pressing those buttons, you know? Every single team fight was close. Every yes. single team fight was literally so close. And it's literally almost everybody's playing mechanically insane. Yeah. They're almost always flashing correctly, getting really good skill shots hit, getting really good wombo combos, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's just... I don't know how teams can be. How can these all these players be so good at so the game? Good. So crazy. And and it's, the thing is, yeah. I can't even tell who's winning sometimes at yeah, the fight yeah, because I'm like, oh, oh, they got this. I'm like, whoa, whoa wait a minute. They, no. Like the fights last so long where you think that it's done, but then there's still like outliers who've kited back and then they kind of come back and start coming in and like turning the fight around. They, You're like, wait a minute. Win it, then right? they win but it. Then, yeah. But then the fights lasted so long that people respawned and yeah, come back. And then they, now it's like, oh, okay, I guess. They won 
the second phase, but then the third phase because of the respawn. Then they yeah. win. And uh-huh. then it's just like the aftermath is just like who what even who's winning? I don't know who's winning. What's and that's happening? why you keep you keep hearing the cheers like in the crowds, like it was so loud. Like it just kept on going. And to me yeah. that like that's what I can't wait. I hope we get more of that in semis, but which I think we will, but man, th- it was so exciting and especially in this series. And so as much as I've doubted DRX, like they earned this victory so much. Um, but when we get to predictions, I, I, I still, I, I still have to say that I'm, I'm kind of in, yeah, I believe in them more now, just not that right. much. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just, I, I, yeah, I do no, want to I mean, say something a... about EDG though. Yeah. 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 Let's okay. no, That's what I mean. We'll go, we'll go, we'll, we'll talk about the, the other teams. Yeah. And you can say stuff about EDG, but what really? I was saying is that like, it's not a knock on them. It's just that teams are so freaking good that yeah. that's all mm-hmm. i'm saying yeah teams are really good it's like hard to compare and then you know maybe they want to stay the underdogs you know maybe drx just needs there to keep go. getting doubted and then they'll win the whole <laughs> thing you know yeah i don't know but like man i really felt like uh at edg is just one of the main reasons i feel like they lost okay yeah so scout hard trolling game five he got solo killed four times in a losing matchup right and then you start to realize yeah maybe scout after he gets okay the first one Right? It's like you're about to get a solo kill in a losing matchup. That's really good for a collie. That's insane for a collie. Okay, you messed it up. Whatever, right? You don't take three more 1v1s, you know? It's just a bad matchup for you. So he's trolling there for game five. Otherwise, Scout played pretty well for most of the series. I think the real uh, bummer for uh, EDG was JJ. I think JJ's play was, uh, as the jungler, was was quite poor. I think his Sig 1 in game five was fine, but his Lee Sin in game four was straight garbage tier, I think that is actually a game losing pick and game losing play. Um and then his I mean his graves, I really felt like that was one of those graves games where everybody is so like hyper focused on this uh Umbral Grave Gore Drinker game that they forget that also Graves does insane damage when you just build full damage. Like you don't build Gore Drinker every single game. And I do think that that was one of those games where JJ could have carried if he just built full damage. But he went Gore Drinker second still and I felt like that was the wrong move. Um, and I think that's going to be a trend going on forward is like Graves is an insane jungler, maybe one of the best, but mm-hmm. you don't go Gore Drinker every single game. You just don't. Sometimes you go crit, sometimes you go lethality, right? But the Gore Drinker build is broken, but it's not in every every game build. So um, I, I do think JJ, I mean, he was like the MVP for their team last year. Like his J4 was getting uncontested and just absolutely smashing the other game. And it, I guess it just wasn't his meta this year. I don't know. JJ, I mean, from being clutching it out against Canyon in Game 5 Finals last year to kind of just trolling and not being a real thing. So it's yeah. a bummer to see it. Yeah. Quick context. JJ wasn't even the starter, like, all year. He, him and mm. Junja, whatever his name was, like, oh, they were yeah. just splitting time all year because they just could not figure out who was good for them. And mm. they just defaulted to JJ at the end. But, yeah, I guess we could see why they were kind of unsure about who to run with because they didn't have a jungler who could play this metal yeah. yeah oh i forgot he went ignite graves oh my god that is such yeah. that is what you do into kindred that's the classic i remember i i played a uh a match in like an amateur uh series and yeah i got ignite graves and i lost uh and that was a bummer but like <laughs> that stuff is it's not good it's like it's literally like you're banking on like hard stomping the early game super hard and pioshik even got super unlucky with the kindred marks but like, yo, you're getting night graves. Like you're so worthless in the mid game. So, yeah. Oh well, JJ. Rip, <laughs> rip yep, to EDG. Rip. I really did want them to win, but uh, yeah. I mean, you can't do those things, especially when everything is just about inches, right? Like yeah. one one inch to to win the game or lose the game. So, definitely uh, unfortunate for them. Uh, let's go to Gen G. Uh, because this is a strong contender, right? Like I think a lot of people have, have them as, you know, favorites to win, uh, but going five games against Damwon who looked amazing. I mean, Canyon, uh, once again, showing why he's Canyon. I mean, this guy, oh my gosh, I kind of feel bad for him, but what a series. Uh, but let's talk about Gen G a little bit. They did end up winning, almost getting reverse sweat, but, but clutching it out in the end. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on them? Yeah. Uh, this was the series that I was just like, why don't we have a lower bracket? Because I think Don yeah. one played like, if they, did, I, I don't think that you let Yumi through because you don't know it's good. I think you let it through because you have a plan, and they had a plan. But like after the first game, I'm like, why did we run the plan back? Why did we run Lucian Nami when yeah. Duck Dun and Kellen are just like, 
Duckdom can only look good on Aphelios in this meta, it looks like. And everything yeah. else was just like, his Lucian was so underwhelming. They got clapped in lane. And I was like, okay, fine. They were just worse at Lucianami. That's fine. They ran it back to the second. I'm like, this is an instant loss. What is going on? Um, I think that this was a really great series. I think this was one of the most exciting series uh, overall for game five. Up until the day after it, <laughs> where that <laughs> game two was also amazing. Uh, I'm mad at Gen G because I had 45 to 49 minutes, 59 seconds as my prediction for the longest game. And they ended at 44, 51 in the last game. <laughs> wow. uh, and then I think that <laughs> a little bit of a hot take maybe is that I think Can did gap Peanut in a lot of games. However, in that game five, I don't actually think Peanut got gapped that hard. Uh, they like, they came back and yeah, Kane was just walking through the jungle. Right. But if you notice, like that was a 20 or like, post 15 minute red cane at transformation mm -hmm. and it was because pino was purposely like avoiding giving as many stacks as possible and then at the end he literally had to wait out blue cane timer so he could get red cane it was so well played from pino and he actually went tilt proof like he had all his camps stolen and he wasn't even that far behind later on mostly because ken trolled at the blue buff and then gave up a buff right uh gave up a buff and like a 700 gold shutdown so I think Cannon overall was the better player, and he did do like some amazing jungling. But Peanut, for what he needed to do for his team, actually was like extremely resilient, and that was impressive. However, does Genji look like the tournament favorites after this series? I, I think the bottom bracket is the weaker side of the bracket. Um, that's my mm. feeling on it. I think that Genji, there was all this hype, right? But this might just not be their meta. Like, they might just be a little bit on the struggle bus. Even though they're still really good, they'll still be a top two or three team in the world. This, I don't think they're, they have enough to get over the finish line. Um, so I think whoever wins the top side of the bracket will get through. I think Genji will still smash DRX. Uh, fun fact, DRX is 4-0 against Damwon. So if Damwon oh, had gotten yeah. through, that would have been like, ooh. But mm. DRX could just destroy them, right? However, they're 0-4 <laughs> against Genji. Oh, Actually, they're 0-8, I okay. think, <laughs> across oh, spring and man. summer. So it's um, yeah, I think it's a three one three zero. Uh, I I'll go for three one because I think they do have a good meta for DRX, but it's just not not enough to beat your demons. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. Three one for Gen G. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gen G, mm -hmm. huh? Gen G. I got a lot to say about this series. Gen G DM one. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, giving over Yumi was not the move, guys. Not <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't like not that either. The move at all. I mean, honestly, those two games that Damwon played where they lost, like in the first two against Yumi, it was so close. Literally, like just barely, Ruler lived so many times because of Yumi diff and because of the BT rush and stuff like that, and the over the overheal and whatever. And it's the new MF build. I mean, you look at this. These comps, right? Let's let's look at this game one comp from Genji. It's Renekton, Maokai, Rise, Rise. MF Yumi. <laughs> yeah. What a garbage comp, man. It looks so bad. But all they're doing is like they're just trying to be as close. They want to outscale Dan One, but they want to be as close as possible because you don't want to outscale them too much because then your early game's too weak, right? So they just want to be as close as possible, have enough early game like, influence, but still outscale them. And yeah, Genji, they did play it well. They played the fine line. I'm going to be honest, guys. Chovy, he had, I think, in my mind, just only one good game. I think, like, his his Yon was really, really insane. All of his other stuff, right? He went 11-3 and three on Rise. I thought he played a really bad Rise game, honestly. I'm not going to lie. So, Chovy, I think, was pretty underwhelming, in my opinion. Um, but, I mean, they still clutched it. I actually think there was no jungle gap, right? Peanut early picked and got counterpicked. And Dan Won is playing... And give everything to Canyon, right? Literally, like, yep. Dan One's like, game plan is give everything to Canyon. And Peanut is just taking the L for his team, and he played it so well. So, Peanut was actually the MVP for me in the series. Right, Followed right next close to Ruler um, for Genji, and they he really clutched it. Both of those players clutched it super hard. Um, but, oh my god, like, Canyon, like, he had a lot of flubs, and he had a lot of, like, weird stuff he did. But, like, that guy is so Giga Chad. He doesn't yeah, care. He, <laughs> he gives zero Fs, man. He just walks up to you and it. starts hitting you. Like, there's five people there. He just starts <laughs> walking up to you and hit you. You're close to me, so I'm supposed to hit you, right? Like, he's a psychopath. And, like, this is just game one. In the first two minutes, he's taking the wolf and then he takes Grump 
outside of in Indian, his face though his like face <laughs> of like canyon is the definition of giga chad canyon is a god and yeah i mean it's it's it was a bit of a bot diff right it was a bit of doc dumb has one champion he can play in cephelios that's so so true and i'm gonna be honest also when you go to that game five it was the top fight right that really solidified the game where mm -hmm. genji won yeah. Uh, because honestly, Dominant Gaming did such a good job of clawing their way back in. They were behind, they were getting smashed, right? Really took a long time for Kane to get form, uh, and they were just kind of getting picked off. Showmaker wasn't really getting much done on the Lissandra. Did not like that pick. Or it was game five, was Lissandra, right? No, it was. Oh no, Syndra. it was Syndra. Game Syndra. Five. Five was I, Syndra. He, yeah, yeah, Syndra. He wasn't getting anything done at all, right? But then there was that one fight in the mid lane. Yeah. Kane gets a four man knockup into nice. a massive Syndra combo where he ulties and scatter the weeks, everybody. And then, you know, Genji sneaks, a, or Demon Gaming sneaks a Baron start, right? And then they have a crazy fight. And Canyon steals two dragons to avoid getting soul pointed and stuff. And then they're almost at soul point. It's like this game is just clutch after clutch after clutch. Yeah. What I'm talking about, though, in the top lane fight that really defined everything where um, Ruler gets the quadra kill on Lucian, you're like, oh, that's mm -hmm. what Lucian's supposed to do, right? Dr. Dom actually plays the fight almost really well he uses his uh red gun q on a bunch of minions and but when he does start hitting champions i watched it he actually doesn't crit anybody he doesn't get he barely gets any crits that would have changed so much for Aphelios in that fight because he had red gun and he would have life steal like crazy with a crit and i thought that that was super unfortunate for duck Dom because he almost clutched that fight because canyon honestly trolled that right he he had gone in a bunch he'd he had healed up, he had gotten low, he used an ulti, and then he just gets popped by Lucian, like, trying to walk up to him. And it's up to Duck Dom to carry that last fight, right? He, he plays it decently well, but he doesn't get any crits. And you see Ruler actually come out with that fight with very little HP, and I'm like, oh, man, that's actually one of those, like, RNG diffs. Like, that is such a close uh, situation. <laughs> yeah. um, I got I, I, it. The series was so crazy, man. Both of those series were so, so crazy and hype. Like, just the smallest inches like determined who would actually won at the end of the day. Um, yep. so, so who do you yeah, think's gonna so. pull this out then between Gen G and uh oh, DRX? I have, to, I have to do that right now. Yeah, they, they, Kevin, Kevin and Alistair did it, so we might as well. All right. You guys are gonna not i I don't know what's up with me today. I Here we go. Here we I go. What is DRX, it? I think DRX is taking it. DRX actually what? looks better to me. It it okay. seems weird, right? It's just I can't get behind Chovy. I just can't. I don't know why. Okay. I watch him get else behind he... Kingen. Uh, Doran is not that much better. Doran's really That's not true. much better. Fair if point. If it was Zeus <laughs> or three I, six I nines, I would be on that side. But I can't get behind Chovy. I think Peanut is so insane. But like Pioshik, like he was kind of trolling in the first game. But then after that, Pioshik was straight banger after banger. Zeko was straight banger after banger. Daft is just like. This guy is untiltable. Like, what is it? He's lost in semis, quarters, 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 quarters every year, all the time. He gets it through quarters. I think that... I think I just cursed them. Maybe that's what just happened, actually. I, think <laughs> I just cursed the underdogs uh, to not oh win gosh. By, by voting for them, maybe. Uh, I don't know. But I'm going DRX 3-2. Okay. And no, no, no one's going to go for it, so I don't care. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Kishik and Daft are two of my favorite players. But, yeah. dude, I am just tilted at King in after game two, man. Mm. I'm... Yep. I'm tilted. I'm not, even, <laughs> I'm not even there. Like both both Kingen and Doran tilt me a lot. So I just took, <laughs> yeah. I took the lesser of evils for me. I think Zeka is having the tournament of his life, playing maybe looks like the best mid in the entire tournament actually. And then Chovy is pretty good, but like God, it was so funny on the co stream. I don't know if you guys watched it, right? It's like he goes like okay, so he's Victor, right? And he goes bot. And, like, someone on the co streams like, guys, you had to fix the bot wave. Like, you guys don't understand. Like, he doesn't need to set up for, for, for the mid push, right? You gotta go fix the. I just feel like it's such a chovy thing, man. Wait, he bro, I thought you were gonna CS. mention the time where uh, Joe Maker gets the three man slam pull in mid lane under oh. the inhib turret. It pans the top lane, and Chovy just <laughs> hitting the top turret, not backing, <laughs> not TP, not yeah. doing jack shit. And I'm like, what are you doing, Chovy? Yeah. That like, was funny too, yeah. I get it, his team got caught, but I'm like, why are you always in these positions that you're yes. not being helpful at all? I'm not a team yeah. player. Dude, that Dude. sway in a moment. <laughs> oh my god, man. Oh when he hit the three man. God. Dude, it was actually so well played because Nuggery is actually distracting them with the Sejuani flak flank. And the, Genji just stops looking at Showmaker for half a second and he gets a three man Swain pull. I'm like, holy shit. 
<laughs> that was yeah. crazy. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, okay. Also, I do want to comment. Nuggery on Gragas, hard trolling. That guy was so bad at Gragas. He just didn't ulti on the right times, ever. Um, he never so. stopped at MF ult. It was actually amazing. It was magical. MF standing yeah. still ulted, and then he just ults, like, air or someone else. And I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. I, I felt like Nuggery was was hard trolling a lot of that. But then, you know, you got Doran, who's just not really contributing much at all anyways. So, yeah, yeah. It, it made it close, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think I do agree that uh, the top lane matchup is going to be close, but because it'll be both bad <laughs> players playing. <laughs> so as as opposed to the T1 uh, JDG matchup where it'll be close because they're both good, uh, we'll have the opposite here. Uh, I will say that uh, I don't know about the, the Kane pick. Like, I, you know what I really did like was that those – both the times that Canyon had, he had great pathing. And you got to, if I was Peanut, I don't know how you don't get tilted because the first game was already tilting. The fact that he snuck in and stole wolves and is taking your grunt right in front of you. But then the fact that in game five, he's doing it again, but on the red side, like, it's just yeah. like, it's crazy. Like, you know, to me, that that, that pathing was just so uh, clever by Canyon. And it definitely shows his, like, genius in the game. But to me, I just don't know. Like, even in the first game, when he did get a pretty quick transformation, they still lost that game in 25 minutes. So it's not like it even did much. And in game five, you, like you said, it took him way longer. And other than that one mid fight where he got a, a three man knockup uh, into the Syndra uh, stun, it really just didn't seem like it, it was doing much. So for me, that was questionable, I think, uh, to pull it out in game five. Maybe they, they saw something, you know, obviously they saw something if they decided to pull it out in the, the final game. But for me, it just didn't really seem to do it for me. Um, I think the Rise game uh, was just a good pick in that circumstance. I don't think, like you said, Mitchell, I don't think Chovy played it particularly well. But it's Chovy and it's Rise and this just seemed to be a good comp. Like you have Lissandra there, you have uh, pretty short range champs, you know, uh, yeah. in there. So oh, yeah. I don't think, you know, it was a decent pick into that. Uh, I, calm, it's, but... a, it's like freaking Nuggery and Showmaker are just throwing their bodies in and dying at the start of yeah. every fight. And then Rise is able to just pick up free kills. And yeah, yeah when he point and clicks you with a lot of gold, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. even the 40% win rate champion is going to be good in that situation. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not God, much you going to do there if you're just going to int, int it for him. But yeah, I think, just, uh, yeah. I mean, I think Gen G DRX, I think it's, uh, I, I don't see the DRX angle. Uh, so I'm going to say Gen G. Um, I think it's going to be a three, one. Uh, I don't think it's going to be, you know, again, I could be wrong. I, I, if I'm wrong, I, you know, who knows? DRX might just surprise me again, but I'm here I just for death, think, baby. I'm here hey, for death. there you go. That's fine. Dude, you know, death that's fine. So, I love that guy. I hope he makes it. It'd be a great storyline too. Yeah. Honestly, you know, DRX, the, the underdogs who just keep, you know, shutting the haters down like myself, you know, they just keep on winning, being tenacious. Good for them. But, uh, honestly, just my. I, I just think that Genji is going to be much better um, with that. Um, I, mean, I know who League Dad and I are going to be cheering for at semis. Yeah. yeah. TSM, baby. <laughs> TSM, I was like, TSM. 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 I don't know if I, I don't know if I was hearing things in the crowd. Like, I don't know. They could have been saying like JDG or DRX, but I no, felt they, they like. Were, they were chanting TSM. Okay. That's what I thought. I was like, are they saying TSM? Because that's. Yes. Cool. It doesn't matter if it doesn't matter if TSM is there. It doesn't even matter if TSM doesn't even make it to playoffs in their own region. There will be TSM chance. Yeah, yeah. there will. Oh, <sighs> okay, well, MSI we've... world, it does not matter. It doesn't matter. We're gonna Different cheer them game. on. It yeah. doesn't matter. They, they probably game. chant TSM at LPL finals. Like, yeah. <laughs> they probably at chant this TSM point, in a football, football game. game. Yeah. At this point, it's yeah. kind of just like a meme, which is kind of funny. Uh, honestly, yeah. the, you just they chant TSM meme, no matter what. So. Yeah, they are a meme. Um, okay, so we've gone through all of the teams, uh, but we do still have... Actually, before we get into a couple more news items, uh, do you guys want to talk a little bit about the meta? Because I know we mentioned Heimer. Um, I know how some of you guys were saying it's not good. I've been playing it in just normal games because why not? You know, I just yeah. try to pick things that are fun. But uh, did you guys have any meta stuff that you wanted to talk about? Like, and we saw a lot of Sejuani, uh, not as much Maokai, uh, some Maokai, uh, definitely a lot of Lucian Nami. Um, but... Is there anything that you guys wanted to point out and maybe things that you think might be seen in the semifinals? Yeah, I think it's absolutely disgusting that Yumi exists. I just, I, it just keeps <laughs> yeah. burning a hole in people's bands. When it's let through, I think 
that game one with Gen, uh, the Dama and Genji game one with the Kane, I thought the Kane was a great pick. I, thought, I was like, oh, this is a smart Kane angle. And he showed off why it was good. But then the Yumi just <laughs> destroyed Jimmy everything. Like, broken. Broken. That one fight yeah. in mid where they almost won with the Kane, yeah, Yumi made the diff 100%. Yeah. Yeah. A thousand percent. Yumi is absolutely giga busted. I hate that it's meta. I hate that it's not like nerfed into the ground. They keep giving it more burst when it loses healing and more healing when it loses burst. I hate it. Uh, so Yumi needs to go die. I don't think anyone else is going to pick Kane because it's just like you have to be very team reliant, like team coordinated, and you need someone who is a psychopath. So I don't think Kane will come back. I think Aphelios is strong, but if you play into a team like JDG, like they will make your Aphelios look like a chump. Like it, we saw like a 10k lead or whatever. It was like Aphelios was double the gold of the JDG's AD carry, and they did not matter. So... I'm not totally sold on Aphelios. I think that with the right team, it, yeah. it, it can be good. And I, I like the pick, but I don't think it's as OP as it looked. Um, it's, I think the Duckdom is actually just good at Aphelios as well. Like, if anything, uh, Duckdom and Hope, who played it in day two and almost carried hard, uh, Viper also Viper. almost carried hard oh, on Aphelios. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I... Besides that, oh, sorry. What? No, go, no, go ahead. I was just going to comment and on Aphelios. The last thought I had was like, I think Silas is also extremely good. I think that mm -hmm. there's a lot of big ticket alts out there. Like, you just pick Silas when you're like, you see Maokai on the other team, you see a Zero or Akali. You're like, I mean, Akali does win early. Like, I think Akali is better for like maybe an item or two in terms of the 1v1, but then Silas just does so much more and then he just outscales. And then a lot of these games are not going to end in 25 minutes, right? So. I think Silas cannot be allowed through if you have a Silas player. And I think most of the... Yagawa was good on Silas in his first half before he got COVID. Um, Zeko goes without saying, I hope Chobi knows how to play Silas. Chobi knows know how he... to play Silas. He's insane with Silas. It's just... Okay. You know, and just, then I... Yeah. Faker, yeah, it's Faker. So I think everyone can play Silas. It's, I think it's going to be more and more contested, along with Azir, who's the premier engage, like... He's probably one of the best engaging characters right now. You build a crown and you just shove everyone in. Mm -hmm. um, Scott had an amazing shove in actually in game one or two, I think it was. So many good shuffles, man, and yeah. so many yeah, good guys... reactions to the shuffle too. Yeah, oh like you God. see them. Players these so people cool. are actually flashing when the yeah. Azir is coming in, and I'm like, why can't we do that? Why do mm -hmm. we just watch? Uh, it's like... Because we practice on sixty ping. Yeah. yeah, there it is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If only there was a low ping environment for us. To if <laughs> yeah. a low ping competitive environment competitive where people pick Azir yeah. right all should, the time. Right should make one uh, of those. Yeah, it's not like we've yeah. been playing against Azir and with Azir for months and months and months and maybe even <laughs> a half a decade now. If you didn't watch League uh, like at a high level and you only watch NA, you would have been convinced that Azir's all is a cutscene. Like everyone yeah. else has to watch and just watch it. <laughs> and then you just watch all these things like reaction flash, and then the Azir reaction flash is their reaction flash. And I'm like, yeah. holy shit. It's yeah. mind game for sure. I, I think I really like Azir in terms of like the the spectators uh, side of it. I think he is kind of stupid that he can do so much damage with the crown, but whatever. I, I, I'd rather that than Corky. Yeah. So I, I'm going to have a counterpoint on Aphelios. I think Aphelios the, is just the best pick for ADC. Uh, just because other than that, you have. Sivir and Kaisa are probably the best two, aside from maybe Kalista, and I'm not I'm not gonna include Lucian because Lucian is reliant on Nami. Mm -hmm. You have to pick Nami with Lucian. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna early pick an ADC and you don't want to just early pick Lucian and Nami and then just in get instant counter, you just have to pick Aphelios. Because you either pick Sivir or you pick Kaisa. Both have really bad matchups and can just get demolished by just playing against a certain team comp. Aphelios doesn't really have that because he's versatile. Because there are, like, again, it's the same issue where, like, there aren't any AD carries that are super broken right now. Like, there has been for, like, ever. Like, Zeri is dominating. Yeah. Like, everyone picking Zeri or everyone picking Sivir or Jinx or whatever it was. There isn't really like that. There's so many different AD carry picks. So, I would expect to see a lot of Aphelios picks and then probably Sivir Kaista. Also, I'm just going to get this out of the way because I feel like I have to. <laughs> <laughs> If you're picking Heimerdinger or Ash, make sure it's in normals, because be honest with yourself, if you're playing it, you're playing for fun, you're not playing to win. <laughs> you're right I, about I'm that with me, that. at least. You're right about that <laughs> well, with me. I'm definitely not playing to normals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Playing normals. That's fun. fine. You're just trying to have fun. Yep. If you're trying, to, if you're if you're playing to win, you are not picking Ash or Heimerdinger. Neither yeah. of them are good in the support role. Ash isn't even good in the AD carry role. No, she's not. She's so bad. <laughs> Yeah, Heimerdinger is definitely one of those, one of those champs, right? We were talking about it a little bit, where it's like, 
always pushing, right? It, Heimerdinger does the most of the damage in the in the comp, right? I mean, when you have a Heimerdinger, right? Heimerdinger's playing for himself. He doesn't care about his ADC. His ADC yeah. is just fodder. Just go die for me while they funnel into me and they think they can kill the Heimerdinger. But it, it is just a coordinated comp sort of deal, right? Where you can just constantly perma push. You can harass really hard, and you and you just you know you coordinated where your jungle is pathing. You coordinated your your mid lane matchup to always have prio two maybe. Like there's a lot of things that go into why a Heimerdinger Heimerdinger pick is good. And then after that, it's like you know sometimes you can just get into situations where Heimerdinger is absolutely useless. He just dies at the beginning of the fight. His rockets and his turrets just do nothing because he didn't actually get anything done early on. Uh, you did see Barrel kind of get into those situations where yeah. he's actually re he's just a money bag. Like he's just getting eaten up and devoured and yum 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 free money. So Heimerdinger is just such a funny pick. It's just I how why did this come up? It uh, apparently on the cast they're talking about it just randomly showed up in in Champs Q and for some reason everybody agreed that it was time to just spam that crap. I don't know what the hell happened. Why this came around is so funny. Oh, it's I'm working really because people haven't figured out the counter to it yet. And we started to see the counter to it come out. Yeah. I mean, Heimerdinger, yeah, let's, like, if you outrange it or if you just straight tank it, like, he's just so useless. He's so garbage <laughs> in those situations. The, the bit, there, there's a lot of issues with it. One is you're playing a, no, you're playing a role that has no income and you're just voluntarily saying, yeah, I need, this, I need to wait 600 extra gold for the most important item that my team can buy, which is a healing reduction item. Because if you just yeah. play Seraphine, you can apply it for your your entire team can apply it and it costs twenty four hundred gold. You play Heimerdinger, yeah. you have to hope they walk into you. You're not gonna apply it to everyone and it costs three thousand. Mm, yeah. True. Yeah. Also we saw the we saw the karma from Barrel, right, when the support pool was super pinched. Um able to play Karma and just Jam's broken. Yeah, really strong. It was like, oh, this looks pretty darn good. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can just run at people. You can make your whole team run at people for super low CD. Um, yeah, the meta, I do think Jax is a bait pick, actually. Jax does not look very good. Um, I, we saw post rotation bans. We saw really early Jax picks. I think that when you're talking about duelists, right, it's just Fiora's just. It, it even feels like when there's the uh, when there's the mind game, right, between Jax and Fiora, it seems like because of the way just the balance shakes out is that Fiora is just so favored in that mind game. Like regardless of how it turns out, it does seem like Fiora just wins. Um, so yeah, Jax is, I think a bit of a bait pick. Um, I also think, I don't know, man, just Nuggery kept playing Renekton too. And I'm just like, this is just like literally such a meme. Yeah. Like he's just building full damage. Prowler's college is just one shot. The Nami. I'm like, I don't, I don't know if this is worth it. I think there are more valuable top lane picks you can do than just one shot the the support. Um, I do think Yone is going to be a pretty big pick. I think if you're Aatrox is no longer just this crazy beatable like unbeatable monster, right? Yep. It's just there's a lot of picks that the real good players can play. Yone and Fiora, and if you're going to blind pick Aatrox, even though it's still 100% prio, you're not going to have a good time. Uh, these Fiora matchup is miserable sometimes, and definitely the Yone matchup it is it can be pretty miserable. Um, so there's gonna be some big champions, and then yeah, I mean we're just gonna see a lot of Siver or Azir, Silas, and uh, Akali mid. Um, yeah. Let's see. Lastly, jungle. Yeah, we talked a little bit about Graves already. Uh, Maokai is looking pretty dead. I think Maokai is pretty gone. Uh, it's just teams have gotten. It's just it doesn't provide enough. I think it is a broken champion, but it's only broken enough when you know, the enemy team picks Heimer at a high. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's when the enemy team doesn't have enough high enough skill level or understanding. That's when Maokai is broken. But once you do, it's like Maokai is very easy to play around. He's uh, he's just too predictable. Um, and then lastly, Sejuani is I think just top prio, right? The yeah. flex is strong, right? But just the the ability to just gank so often and her ulti cooldown is really really low. Uh, the phase rush tech is super super broken. I do think. That phase rush has just been ever since we left what, that Udir Hecarim meta from like a year or two ago, where everybody took phase rush in every single champion in the entire game. It got nerfed a little bit, right? And then people stopped taking it. Phase rush is still broken. Phase rush yeah, is probably one of the good. most broken runes in the game, actually. Like it's super underrated. So this this Sejuani um, phase rush tech is is pretty legit. Finally, I guess I was wrong. I predicted Hecarim was coming back to the meta. I still think that. Hecarim should still be there. I mean, it's still really strong. It's not as strong 
as it was showing itself, but like we're seeing some serious jungle picks get pinched. And we saw Canyon pick Wukong because it was getting picked so much. I'm like, where's the Hecarim, bro? This is Hecarim's so much better than Wukong right now in the current state. So those those are my uh those are my thoughts on the uh, on the meta. Yeah, I think Sejuani also is really good uh you know paired with a Yone, right? Like it it's yeah, uh yeah. makes a really yeah. good combo or any other really yeah, Fiora, any kind of melee Silas. uh yeah, champ. Really yeah, good. Silas exactly. So yeah. I think that's what also makes Sejuani such a really good uh pick at the moment. And with the phase rush uh tech look, hey, if if freaking Peanut can get uh just absolutely like dumpstered early game and still be a threat like later on, even after all his camps are taken by a freaking cane, like you know that champion is still gonna be good. The fact that he could still have impact and he missed a lot of his ults, and it <laughs> still felt like that that ult was up every like thirty seconds or so. It yeah. just felt like it was always there. It didn't matter if he whiffed it or not. Um, I also think it's interesting that again a hundred percent. Well, not 100%. I'm looking at stats here. But Caitlyn was pretty much banned all the time. And I still it's don't understand, yeah, why it's being banned so much. And yet, what I'm seeing, I, I see 92.9% pick ban presence, but it wasn't pick. So I don't understand what that is. If, if it was up one time and then all of a sudden nobody picked it. so or, or maybe all the, you know, picks were already made and, you know, it was never banned. So I don't know. That still confuses me. I wonder if we'll see it's it. It's for the Kate Locks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but I, I just, I don't think it's worth. Then it. why Lux not ban? Good. Well, yeah, I guess bad. No, you ban Lux, Kate. But it's, yeah. it's like, just, just, okay. I know this is, sounds funny when it comes from a North American podcast, but like when we're actually talking about Eastern teams, right? Just dodge the Lux Q. I like. I, yeah. It sounds like oh, just dodge it, right? But no, actually though, like just dodge Lux Q. It's not that hard. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's more about the lane level. pressure. That it, it's so much pressure. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's it's just fair. Well, if fair. they're playing well, Heimerdinger and using that for lane pressure, I think they're going to use Caitlyn Lux for lane pressure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just at least Heimerdinger is auto target, right? It's like a large radius with his grenade, his turrets is not dodgeable. I don't know. I mean, I, okay, it's I also think, yeah. So, so. It's all yeah. right. Yeah. Kate Lux also does dumpster the Ash Heimerdinger stuff, probably, as my yeah. guess, maybe. So, I, I hope so. I hope, I hope so. so, right? Right. Heimerdinger <laughs> yeah. should be able to play the game against Kate Lux, right? Hopefully. Well, um, here's a question, though, uh, because we haven't seen it, but I did hear it mentioned. I think it was JLXP, but, uh, you know, with all the Sejuani Pryo, uh, why are we not seeing Trundle? Because this typically is the quote unquote counter pick for. Sejuani, why are we not seeing that? So I, I want to throw that to you guys because I don't know. I don't know why. I feel like yeah. we should be seeing it, and we didn't see it at all. So what are your thoughts? Like, do you think did that you it's just being Trundle missed? Or what did you say? Trundle. Trundle, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. I'm making sure. Uh, I think that it likely comes down to what the goals of the junglers are, and I think a lot of these junglers just don't spam Trundle. They're not like, maybe if we had more Trundle players, we'd see it more often. We saw it in group stage, right? Like, we saw yeah. it against Maokai. Quite we saw a it a little bit against Sejuani, but mostly Maokai. And Orange. There are people who play, and they will be willing to play it. But, like, for some reason, there's there's just categories of people who really enjoy Trundle and actually know how to use this stuff and just think it's the best thing. And then there are people who just, like, I don't want to touch that shit. So that that could be it. Um, I think maybe one of the junglers out of the four actually plays Trundle, but I have to actually look it up. So I will look it up while you guys talk. Okay. So yeah, I yeah. Go ahead. I I don't understand why we don't see more Camille. Honestly, she has eight games. She's lost one. Yeah, she's pretty strong right now. There's there's like five champions that have over five games played that have like a really high win rate, and it's Fiora, Viego, Silas, Sivir, Yumi. I think mm. I'm missing one. Mm. Yeah, like, I mean those are those are all pretty. Yeah, those have been pretty looking pretty good champions uh, that you listed out. So I, I do think it's interesting to to tackle the Trundle pick specifically. He did get nerfed. Um, his W cooldown went up like four, five seconds, three seconds, something really big. Um, four seconds. So there's there's that to consider. So like there's the mentality aspect of maybe a player that like it gets nerfed and don't want to play it. But mm-hmm. I do think that the phase rush check is a big deal. If you see a Trundle, they pick phase rush right. Okay, yeah, you ulted Sejuani, but there's not you're not taking this, the aftershock stats, and now Sejuani just runs away from you, and Trundle only has slows, so the slows don't even affect Sejuani anymore. Um, so I think that is a big deal, and also the uh, the clear from Trundle is really low. It's really mm-hmm. slow right now uh, with the W nerf, and you can't take Raptors. And I think Raptors are a big deal right now because you see, like you're seeing like you know Graves and Sejuani's and Viegos and um, Canes just like instantly pop raptors right 
And if you just have to leave those up as Trundle, you're just you just you playing a, you're playing a five camp game, and yeah. the enemy team's playing a seven camp game. So I do think that's actually a massive deal. Um, but then you realize that that Rift Herald is super broken, and Trundle is so good at Rift Herald. So I'm not totally sure what the exact reasoning is, but those are my guesses. Yeah. Okay. Only Peanut has played it. And he's played it twice in group stages this world uh, mm. of the remaining junglers. It's been yeah, played like six junglers. or seven times. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and also, I mean, to be fair, Trundle doesn't have a dash, right? So Trundle, when you're in a meta against Aatrox and Silas and Akali um, and stuff like this, and like Heimerdinger, right? Like if you don't have a dash, you kind of just get boned really hard too. Like you, you can just be so worthless in fights sometimes. You, you, even if you ulti the Sejuani, right? She runs her ass away. It doesn't matter if you're just a little bit tankier. You're not taking the aftershock stats, and you just die. You're just useless because you're just a walking. You're just a walking lethal tempo for the enemy ADC. That does remind so. me though, uh, the whole Sejuani running away thing. Everyone's just building more and more like a ram. We saw support Ash. Yeah. We saw Warmogs out the wazoo. Uh, yeah. Multiple junglers, right? Yep. So yep. Warmogs with Warmogs. I'm like, finally. I'm like, this makes so much sense. Why aren't you guys yeah. doing this? Like. Haven't you ever seen a fight where like the jungle gets chunked and then they just have he has to reset yep. and then they get Baron or Dragon and I'm just like, just put Warmogs. You know what's funny? Warmog out of all the ones you listed, Warmogs is the only good one. <laughs> Ash, support Ash, support Ash, Ash, garbage. AP Kaisa, garbage. <laughs> no, Aram is the. Hey, Rams, All the right, meta, we got guys. the approval. One yeah. out of five, that, or there you four, go. that's good enough for me, man. <laughs> Still warm monks, approved. guys. It's almost uh, always better. Yeah, I did I did notice that. I, I forget who it was, but it was on a Poppy game, and I did think that that was such a good deal because, yeah, like, is they were contesting. I think it was Baron. Didn't work out, but he didn't have to reset, and so he could just kind of do the dance again and, uh, yeah. you know, and just My be there. My grand theory is, is if Warmox told you how much it healed you throughout a game, it would be bought, like, twice as much. Oh, probably, yeah. like, probably so true. Yeah. People yeah, are like, Fimble Wimper gives a shit, which it is better if you just fight and you don't, like, you just die or you fight and that's it, right? Yeah. But, like, if you fight once, disengage and siege, Warmox is always better. Like, and the way and close. the way these fights have been going, where it's like you know, like it it doesn't seem to end, where it just keeps going and going yeah. and going. Like we're yeah. not everyone; it's not a clean wipe. You you kind of back off. Warmogs might be the key because these teams do know how to kind of push those limits and kind of extend the fight. It's like you know, yeah. and we're also be... seeing we're also seeing a ton of uh, bloodthirster too, right? So if you have your mm -hmm. mythic and bloodthirster, it takes a long time to get LDR, and there's no blade of the rune king either, really in the meta. It's just Viego, uh, even if if he does take it. Sometimes he doesn't even take it, right? So I yeah, flat health seems not too bad. And then you have Camille like peeking around, right? You have. Azir's taking crown and not Leandri's. Like, there's just no Leandri's in the meta either. So Warmog's value just goes up and up every single bit, every single time this that 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 stuff happens. So, yeah, 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 seems legit. Yeah, it's just Fiora, really. That uh, you're not going to be happy playing <laughs> Warmog's yeah, into. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, we had a couple more uh, items on the docket. Uh, I want. I do think we could talk about one. The other one, which is the LEC format change. I think we should talk about that next time because we'll probably have more time to talk about yeah. it because we're already at about an hour and a half but i do want to mention uh one piece of news which is uh yanko's leaving g2 mm -hmm. because i do think that that's uh pretty noteworthy i mean this is uh is he the longest no caps is still right he, he he's yeah. one of the longest standing members though of, Go of on, man, g2 I sent the meme earlier Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Never mind. Yeah, well, Alistair did put a meme in the Discord. If you haven't no, seen Yanko's it, go check that out. He's been on G two longer than Caps. Oh, he has. Okay. Caps yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Caps was on Fnatic in twenty eighteen while Yankos is on there. Yeah. So after this year, Caps will be longer because I think it's only yeah. one year difference. Yeah. It's one year difference. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, what are your thoughts? Are like, if they re removed him or said you can go free agent and like didn't give him a good contract offer, like that's that's dumb as shit. I think Jankos is like I don't care how this world went. None of the junglers look like gods this um, this world. Like, mid rang had some fun games in the first week, and the second week he looked, like, kind of ass. Yep. Um, I think Yankos is, like, the best Western jungler historically, and it is very strange to me that G2 is not keeping him because his combination with Yankos, yeah, there are some metas they're not good in, but when they're good, they're the only duo that consistently can compete. Mm -hmm. And so it's very strange to me. It is exciting. We can find, we can maybe see, I don't think he'll go to with perks because they have Bo over there and Vitality, but we can finally see one of the best talents go somewhere else. And like we saw Wonder go to Fnatic and they look decent, you know? Then we saw Mickey go to Exile and they almost qualify. Like 
this G2 like super team has finally completely split apart, right? And we see yeah, all the yeah. talent split across all the teams. Um, I don't want him to come to NA. He I won't. think he would be amazing here, but I don't want him to come. I think he's got way too much like <laughs> talent to be to come here. If he does, he'll do well. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, all the people that I saw, and this is you know cherry picking, but I saw a lot of people criticizing Yankos and saying he was washed up. I'm like, dude, it's one tournament. All of EU is washed up. Come on, guys. There's no like that one tournament does not decide a man's career. He he was able to get a team with Flacket and Targumus. Like Targumus is good. I don't think Flacket is as good. And he, they got him to MSI. Like he is a very good jungler, and his mid laner is also very good. So I wish they retained him, but they didn't. So yeah. I think it's a bad move. Probably G two without Carlos doesn't have the same direction anymore. It probably costs too much. Yeah, sure. honestly, I don't know where he goes. Um, I can almost guarantee he won't be NA though. He he's very clear that he does he does not like NA and he does not like the environment here. <laughs> and honestly, he I he probably gets paid enough and he has streaming. Why would he come to NA? Yeah. Did you, he, uh, Alistair, Did you see the time where FBI was doing the uh, pro whatever like map geography test with um, Travis? No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. He saw FBI answer Canada for like multiple countries in Europe. And he's just like, I, I hate this so much. This is so, he was God like damn so it. upset. God damn it. So I just thought it was a funny connection. Just, like he was send, me, send me that after. I'll, I'll take it. I'll, I'll, show I'll, I'll, show it I'll send you after. It was so funny. The whole the whole thing was the very the American meme where Americans don't know maps at all. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. I've I, actually been experiencing that at school. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. I we're not gonna do geography here on this podcast. Heck no, 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 bro! No, I will no. knock out some geography. I no, will no. knock out nothing. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, will no. get no correct <laughs> answers. I'm like, I know where California is, and Washington. Anything else? Go. No. I'm, I'm closer, good. closer did not know where California was. Oh, what? They pointed what? to the state, and he's like, "I don't know what that is. I'm from Turkey." You're like, "You live here. Hey, you live here." That's your state, bro. Yeah, um, so, okay, uh, Yanko has actually <laughs> released a video. So mm. he did release a video mm -hmm. talking a lot about his thoughts and everything. Uh, I will actually address, he would go to NA. He would go to NA for a big bag. Oh. He's not going to go to NA because there's no big bag this year, though. But yeah. he said in the past oh. and in this video that he would go to NA for a big bag. But he was pretty clear that's retirement time, though. Like He's like retiring if he does that. So I think if he wants to compete, which it sounds like he still does, because he, he also said in the video he wants to put G2 in the dirt. Which, I mean, who doesn't, right? So I don't think he's going to NA this year or anytime soon. But if Yankos does go to NA, it's straight retirement time for him. Um, so that's fair. But this guy is super competitive. So he might have just... He's a guy that... He's very double if He just says a lot, a lot of stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. And he means maybe 60% of it. So who knows? Um, but Yankos is just legendary. He's just... Yeah, not only is he one of the best Western junglers, but... He's one of those guys that actually, for a span of two to three years, was up there as one of the best junglers in the world. He could compete with the Eastern regions. He can compete with. He was beating Korea, and he was getting you know three would by China. But whatever, right? Like he was one of those guys on that roster that did a lot of stuff. Um, so yeah, this G two roster is a bummer. I will say though, when um, Kevin earlier in the podcast we were talking about how when Europe did fall and the, the relevance of Seoul coming back into play, right? And mm -hmm. uh, that's when LCK finally came back. I don't know if I agree with that take at all, actually, because that's because Europe has always only been Fnatic and G2. So I only look at Fnatic and G2. In that year in 2021, when uh, Europe didn't do anything after doing a lot in 2020 and 2019, uh, Reckless left Fnatic, Fnatic was garbage, and went to G2, and Perks left, and G2 was garbage. So I actually don't know if like it's just because of Soul. It does feel like the the two best rosters just had a garbage year because they had a terrible role swap because Reckless and Yanko could be get along. Yeah. It could be coincidence. It could be. So I, it's hard to say, but I do think that I mean maybe the Soul is a thing, but it seems like a bit of a reach to me. I just think that our two best teams for Europe got bad and they never were able to get a leg up and they fell behind. And now they're really far behind. And now we're all really is still far playing in ERLs, though. Like we, a lot of talents just to the winds. We might yep. see EU re come back because some of the really good EU players are probably going back because they yeah, aren't Reckless in the bag is anymore. Supposedly coming back, 
Han Sama's, right? uh, he, I don't know, Han Sama took a vacation for a year for some reason, and now he's back in EU, so yeah. hopefully he can play well. <laughs> wow. yeah, I don't know where he's stuff. been, but I'm, I'm hoping yeah. he's doing well. I hope he's yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. still good. He took a nice, <laughs> relaxing vacation, you know, so he's back, ready to play in EU. Um, oh, yeah, boy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. well, yeah. uh, all right, well, any uh, final thoughts before we wrap things up? It is kind of sad uh, because it, it is almost like a finality to that G2 uh, legacy team uh, with the Yankos leaving. But yeah, any final G2's thoughts? G2 is some. G2, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, like, it's like getting rid of Doublelift all over again. What happened mm -hmm. to TSM after? Didn't win shit. What happened to TL after? Didn't win shit, right? Yeah. I just don't think you should get rid of, like, you, like, G2 is under, they want the international success. And it's like, you're just underestimating what it takes to get there in the first place, right? You guys want a trophy this year. And then you made finals and yeah. stuff like you guys are just underestimating how valuable it is just to have that in your own domestic region. And you're like, yeah, we win domestic all the time. We can make it. We just need to get the next step. And it's like, oh, but now you can't even get to worlds. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. I, I think my takeaway or final thoughts are like we did. The viewership is down, but I think it is very good to have any worlds. So, like, I think. It helps a lot for the scene. It helps a lot for just people getting interested. Like new generations of people getting into esports, like has to happen through like live events, honestly. Because we didn't even have NA finals for a while. Like the correlation of like NA dying and the loss of interest, like also just came when COVID came. And yep. Yep. True. It, I know it's not a great time zone for some regions, but we still don't know the VOD results. Like how how many people are watching through VODs and stuff like that. There's also a lot more co-streaming, like as of late. So that's all that. I, I think yeah. NA is a bad time zone for Asia as well as Europe, but suck it up. You, it's one of the major regions. It's really bad if we don't have it at least once every five years, right? So yeah, I'm glad we sure. had NA Worlds. I'm really excited about it. Still looking for tickets. Uh, yeah. I'm if T1 <laughs> doesn't make finals, ticket prices drop. Is my my uh, measure. So true. If it's true. like JDG DRX, I might be able to get some reasonable reasonable prices so I'm i saw hunting. i saw uh 576 for two tickets so a little over a little under 300 bucks per ticket that's the lowest i saw didn't buy wow. them but that's the lowest i saw that's a lot lower because like the tickets were uh wholesale wholesale were like a hundred something yeah yeah, yeah. Um, we'll see we'll see what, it, what it, we'll see if we can get some tickets oh yeah kevin i am in the bay so you know oh. we can watch party it up yeah okay. also if we, don't, podcast. if we don't get tickets if we don't get yeah. tickets, yeah. But hey, listen, if you're out there on the podcast and you have extra tickets, <laughs> hit us up, guys. Hit us up <laughs> for yeah. the World Finals, I San Francisco. Know. We can all go together. We can, you can join the podcast maybe for a night. That could be fun. So I think Kimmer was trying there, to go. I don't know if he got yeah, tickets or not. I, I don't know if he's still coming because of you know how cursed everything is. But we'll yeah. see. You know. Yeah, Kimmer, right. come on out, buddy. Listen to this podcast. Yeah. There you support C9 tickets. together. I'll wear my support. C9 jersey. There it is. Yeah, I'm down. <laughs> nice all right, all right. Yeah. well let's wrap things up that was good uh i can't wait to, i'm looking forward to the semifinals. i will report back hopefully i'll still have a voice for next podcast because i'll probably take be photos yelling take the whole time. that'll be so fun oh yeah it's gonna guys. be take it's gonna be amazing yeah, yeah i can't wait for it but, uh, faker for me oh i faker, will yeah. dude if i meet faker oh man i am this this old man right here will be so happy. That means I can oh, die. He's gonna have a heart attack. Oh my yeah. goodness. He's gonna be like, who is this old man <laughs> screaming I'm the at weak me? Dad. Hi. <laughs> He's gonna be like, who is this old man trying to can scream we at me? Podcast? <laughs> yeah. Imagine. Can I get a sound bite? Can I get a sound bite, yeah. Zager, please? He'd be like, what? What are you doing? Get away. No, that's when that's when security tackles me and uh, throws me out. 30 feet, yeah. get a clip from him saying, watch the All In podcast, and then we'll use that as our ND forever. Oh my gosh, that would be so He'll amazing. just shoulder roll away from you and keep walking. Yeah. I know. We'll oh pull gosh. out some broccoli. <laughs> oh, uh, I yeah, can't wait. Final, final, final note, Deft's winning world championship. Let's go, Deft! All right. Oh. All right. I'm editing that out. That's not... <laughs> just kidding. I'm sorry, Mitch. I'm just kidding. Yo, I'm so uh, down for Deft to win, man. <laughs> I, I am, okay. too. I'm he so down for it. that timeline. Yeah, he does. He does true okay i might go to military next year too so i just i just oh. want it i want deft i want deft dub deft dub deft dub okay uh well that's gonna do it thank you again to my awesome co-host kevin mitchell and alistair for always sharing their wise insights but until next time enjoy your climb on the rift try not to be too toxic and we'll see you all on the next episode peace